easy thing to do Just to stand and look at you That's more Viva Las Vegas Viva Las Vegas Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today we continue our look at the history of music in Las Vegas, with this, the second video in the series. In today's lesson, we tackle the 1950s. If you missed the first video about Las Vegas' beginnings, there's a link in the description. If you want to watch that one first, I'll understand. I'll just be here waiting, patiently, not lonely at all. If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. It started in April of 1950 at a place called the Desert Inn, where star-studded shows enjoyed accompaniment by the Carlton Hayes Orchestra, featuring the talents of a young Louis Armstrong. This was also the first hotel in Vegas to feature Frank Sinatra. Ever heard of him? Venues like the Thunderbird would open with acts like Nat King Cole and Ella Fitzgerald, with guests like Howard Hughes and Wilbur Clark having special booths in the showrooms reserved just for them. Despite the obvious backing of the mob, entertainers enjoyed a heyday of special treatment, including free room and board, and respect sorely lacking from many venue owners and management today. Shots fired. The stars kept coming and their salaries kept rising, including Marlene Dietrich, Liberace, and even a one-time only appearance by a young actor named Ronald Reagan. What about him? You've heard of him, right? But what about the talented musicians who weren't headliners? Well, Vegas shows had room for them in the orchestra pits of the spectacular shows as well. Unfortunately, the repeated multiple shows a day led to musical boredom for many artists, but they paid well and were generally long-term, again, unlike today. <laughs> many musicians would come to Vegas and, seeing the opportunities everywhere, quit their touring gigs immediately and settled down. With so much opportunity and good treatment, Las Vegas was the place to be if you were a musician. Leading into the 1960s, everyone was riding high. I hope you'll come along for the ride. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that we'll see you in the next video in this series. In the meantime, if you'd like to support the channel, please, there's links down in the description for Patreon, where I sell my CDs, and also Room6.shop for merch. Uh, remember to be amazing, and if you want to see more videos like this, click up here, and if you'd like to subscribe, please click down here and don't forget to ring the bell so you'll be notified when new videos get posted. Have a great day, and we'll see you again in Room 6.